in the post-apocalypse got you down? Do you crave the warm feeling of mama's home cooking? Well, that ain't gonna happen, so reach for a tasty alternative. Blamco Mac and Cheese contains all the essential elements of food with a tangy cheese flavor. Respect your taste buds and give Blamco a try today. Almost everywhere we can visit in the Fallout universe has a story. Some, of course, more in depth than others, but many paint a picture of what might not really be there, giving off false positive vibes when in reality, they harbor some of the darkest, most sinister tales the Wasteland has to offer. And if you don't want to give off false positive vibes and hold sinister secrets, you should consider subscribing to the channel for more Fallout content like this. Do it to cleanse your soul. On the outside, many settlements that we come across can seem pretty ordinary. The typical people just trying to eke out a living of what they can in the post-apocalypse. The pit, which represents the ravaged ruins of post-war Pittsburgh, is no different. Well, at least on the surface. Not too many towns that we come across in the Fallout series are run by raiders and use slave labor to accomplish their growth. But during these post-war times, that type of scenario is sadly more prevalent than ever. We just usually see it on a smaller scale. Though the case of the pit is different much different. Looking into the various social circles and hierarchies within the city tells a story we likely won't find too often anywhere in the wasteland. Beyond all the steel and rubble and the twisted metal that has become synonymous with the raider playground lies one of the most endearing stories in the Fallout universe, and at the center lies a man named Ishmael. Growing up on the west coast of the United States, Ishmael Asher would become a loyal member of the Brotherhood of Steel, making an oath to salvage advanced technology at all costs. Like most Brotherhood members, Asher took his duties very seriously and maintained loyalty to the group. By 2254, the Brotherhood would come to terms with three objectives they desperately wanted to complete. Scavenging the remains of the now destroyed nation's capital of Washington, D.C., of course recovering any tech they can find. Reports had been made of a strong super mutant presence in the area, which led to their second objective of investigating the claims. And finally, to relocate and establish contact with members of the Midwestern Brotherhood of Steel, who formed after their airship crash near Chicago. The team, led by Owen Lyons, consisted of Reginald Rothschild, Paladin Tristan, Henry Kasdan, and of course, Ishmael Asher. Unable to make contact with the Midwest Brotherhood unit, the troop pressed on towards the ruins of DC. Ultimately, they would arrive at the hellscape that is the ruins of Pittsburgh, now known as the Pit. This area had long ago surrendered to the madness of the post-war world. Raiders and rape gangs filled the region, creating their own versions of frontier justice. Slavers would overpopulate the remains of the city, creating an actual nightmare zone where innocent people could hardly survive. The physical dangers, mixed with the sickness being passed around due to the old industrial factories damaged by bombs during the Great War, was enough to ruin any positive outlook someone had about living in the pit. The Brotherhood Patrol was genuinely horrified by what they saw. Though many places in the wasteland were lawless hellholes, the pit lacked even the basic building blocks of decency. This would lead to an operation into the city. The Scourge. This large-scale military action saw the Brotherhood sweep through the ruins and neutralize any threat, no matter how small. To say that the Brotherhood overpowered the Pit Raiders would be an understatement. Due to their vastly superior technology and advanced military tactics, the Brotherhood sustained virtually no losses during the campaign. The Pit saw significant losses to their population. By the end of the Scourge, only a few Raider gains remained. The Brotherhood used this action to clear out the hostile and frankly vile residents of the Pit and recruit children who didn't show signs of mutation. Paladin Kodiak, who would go on to be the largest and most powerful member of the Lion's Pride Brotherhood Detachment, would be taken from here and placed into initiate training. During the Scourge, Asher was caught in an explosion inside one of the many steel mills that litter the city. Seeing him as their only casualty, the Brotherhood troop pushed on to Washington, leaving Asher behind. After being knocked out for hours, Asher would wake to find scavengers trying to loot his power armor. After everything they had seen, these locals would start to revere Ishmael as a god with what the Brotherhood had done to the city and this soldier rising from the ashes of an explosion that surely would have killed any mortal man, the remaining Pit residents were quick to come together under Asher's leadership. Rather than trying to make contact with the Brotherhood, Asher founded the new city of the Pit. He had been personally moved by the sheer tenacity of the locals not only during the Scourge, but after as well. This was supported by the fact that the Pit held one of the only functioning steel mills that the Brotherhood had ever seen. This would allow the Pit to produce gear and equipment. Using the training he had received from the Brotherhood of Steel, Asher would dismantle most of the raider gangs in the area, systematically killing their leaders and conscripting the raiders that did not rebel. 
marking the most brutal among them as his lieutenants. Asher transformed what once was a group of squabbling raiders into an autocratic government. The gang was now an army, and Ishmael's influence covered most of the city. Haven, a mostly intact skyscraper, would become his base of operations and offered a great way to watch over the city. Asher would realize that just having an army would not be enough to grow this new society. Though it goes against his moral compass, he would start to use slaves for labor, referring to them as workers as they have a chance at freedom, though the odds are not in their favor. Asher looks at this as a necessity, as most pit residents are unable to breed due to troglodyte degeneration contagion. TDC for short, this disease plagues all the residents of the pit. It's a result of the combined ambient radiation and the industrial toxins that blanket the area. This is amplified by cannibalism, which half of the region's inhabitants have indulged in. TDC leaves skin lesions after a few weeks of exposure. Still, some have left the area and after about a month, the skin had cleared up. The more troubling effect of TDC is the way it alters brain chemistry, producing psychological degeneration, with the most extreme cases turning into the trogs that call the pit home. Due to this widespread problem, most non-raider populations would be enslaved and managed by a brutal upper class that was primarily made up of Henri raiders, just looking for an excuse to be abusive. These workers made tremendous progress in making things operational in the pit. As the growth continued, Asher would start to import slaves and hire raiders from outside the city to accommodate. As the city was on the rise, it would be visited by a scientist named Sandra Kundanika. She had heard tales of the pit and saw it as a significant force in the wasteland and wanted to offer what help she could. With her solid education, Sandra would be welcomed by the pit's raider class. Asher was quite smitten with Sandra, as well as incredibly impressed with her abilities. The two would eventually marry, and soon after, Sandra would give birth to their child, a daughter named Marie. Marie was special, and not just to Ishmael and Sandra. She was a real miracle. Marie would be born with immunity to mutation, a special ability that the wasteland lacked. This also meant that Marie would not be affected by TDC, a massive blight for the pit. This sunk the Ashers into a quest to find a cure for the rest of the inhabitants of the pit. With their promise that if a cure is discovered, Ishmael will reorganize the pit, curing all of their mutations and granting all its citizens freedom. Until that day comes, Ishmael waits, and so does the pit. One day, a slave will rise up, and perhaps be the wheel that sets in motion a fast track to the cure. Or maybe they will just morph into the upper class, embracing the raider ways, forgetting the plight of the people below. Citizens of the pit, workers of downtown, traders of uptown, and all fierce souls who do what must be done, I bring you good news. We stand at the dawn of a new golden age, where others merely survive. We thrive! Our industry is the envy of the commonwealth. Our safety is the envy of the capital waste. Our might is the envy of Ronto. And while I have led your efforts, it has been by your own strength that you have earned all the envy of the world. They envy the steel shaped by the workers in our mills. And they envy the strength of our traders and raiders who wield the steel for the pit. And most of all, they envy our victories in the struggle for freedom. Because yes, freedom is what we all work towards. Freedom from fear, freedom from disease, freedom to live as once we did before we were shackled by atomic fire. And so, to celebrate this struggle, I ask my loyal workers, who among you is prepared to fight for your freedom? Who among you will risk your life in the crucible to create a new life of freedom in Uptown? Who will take this rare chance to thrive? Thank you for watching my video on Ishmael Asher. If you enjoyed it, think about leaving a like and subscribing to the channel for more Fallout content like this. I want to thank my patrons and YouTube channel members, and a special thanks to my bigger supporters. Kim Jong-un, JP Rivera, Not Ketchy, Stupendous Skellington, Hackerman, Fireflare, Primark Mustard, Edgy, Bill Scott Sheets, Death6199, Alexander Cobb, Lod Have Mercy, Thomas, Papa Swanson, and Billy Joe Jim Bob. Thank you so much for your continued support. I hope to catch you on the next one. It has been Mantis.
up in the spot looking extra fly. For the day you die, you gon' trust the sky. You gon' trust the sky, baby girl, testify. Come up in the spot looking extra fly. For the day you die.